if he governs anywhere near the way he has spoken as a candidate, I'm really concerned. Former CIA Director Michael Hayden was one of 50 national security professionals who recently signed a letter denouncing Donald Trump. The signatories, all of whom served in Republican administrations, argue that Trump would be the most reckless president in American history and would put the nation's security at risk. We watched Trump's first major foreign policy speech with Hayden and wondered if the candidate had allayed his fears. So all of you in Republican administrations make some pretty pointed criticisms and say that he is not only unfit, temperamentally unfit, that he's unqualified and he would be a dangerous president. Donald Trump responds and says, well, these are the guys that created the mess. So, so in the response, all right, the response that Mr. Trump had actually underscores kind of the reason for our letter. He blamed Iraq on us. All right, we were in government then. He blamed ISIS on us. No, we weren't in government then. He blamed Libya on us. None of us were in government then. None of us have been in government for eight years. And, and so you, you get this kind of broad brush, inaccurate, non-fact-based, very emotional response. Well, that's what we're afraid of. And that's why we wrote the letter. Does it offend you in some way when you watch this speech and you see him saying, we need to do this, we need to do that, and these are basic intelligence gathering capabilities, which one would presume, paying attention, that we already do. There's a tone to the campaign that all those guys who came before me were weak, stupid, and corrupt, all right? Um, in fact, we actually do pretty tight refugee screening uh, in, in this country. But you, if you just heard the speech cold, you, you would think that we hadn't been doing that at all, and now we're really going to be uh, doing it. We've been very late and, 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 frankly, weak to need in responding to ISIS. Only lately have we seemed to have caught up with, I think, an appropriate response on our part. So I think th those are fair criticisms. But again, the, the, the broad tonality of, of it's the other versus us. It's our values against their values. Um, it, it's not just wrong. It's not useful. You're not going to vote for Donald Trump, who would be bad, as you say, on all these issues, according to you? I, look, uh, we've all, you I have signed a letter saying that um, we have now gained enough information about how we think Mr. Trump would act as president that we all felt very comfortable saying we would not vote for him. Hillary Clinton. Uh, I've got issues with Secretary Clinton as well. I'll tell you, Michael, in, in my very narrow lane, which we've been talking about, I act, frankly think she's better than Mr. Trump. Frankly, in most of that lane, I think she's better than President Obama. But, you know, I don't vote just on my lane. I got a bunch of stuff here and a bunch of stuff here that influences my vote. So I am not in any way prepared to endorse her either. In 2012, um, Mitt Romney said something that was widely mocked during his campaign. <laughs> Russia <clears throat> being our primary adversary in the world. Yeah. Um, I don't think people are mocking him as much now, but who would have thought that the Republican candidate would be consistently accused of being a stooge, unwittingly, yeah. perhaps, of yeah. the... Uh, of yeah, the I've, seen, I've seen the articles on that. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily buy, buy into that. I, I, do, I do sense, I, I do sense, a, 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 what should I call it, Michael? A, a sense of autocrat envy on, on the part of candidate Trump. He, he, he does seem to, to I mean, he, he said kind things about Kim Jong-un, for God's sake, and he says similar things about, about Vladimir Putin. The beauty of the American system is we don't want strong men, okay? We, you know, we have co-equal competing separate branches of government for a reason. And so, and so if you have that concern, the part of the acceptance speech that says, I alone can solve these problems smacks of systems different than the one Hamilton and Madison set up. You say that he's temperamentally unfit. We can see that temperament on screen when he's, right. when he's um, giving a speech or when he's you know, shouting down hecklers. What does that mean in the Oval Office? Michael, our Constitution gives incredible authority to the president in matters of intelligence, foreign affairs, and the use of the armed forces. You're putting that person in an incredibly empowered position, hence our concern. Now look, Michael, we could have this all wrong, all right? This man could grow an office. This man might have a different persona behind locked doors than the one he shows, but the one we got is, what we see 
is what we have. Here's how I default when I get to this point in a conversation. If he governs anywhere near the way he has spoken as a candidate, I'm really concerned. Give me an example of that. Oh, and an enthusiastic embrace of beyond waterboarding, the killing of the terrorist families. You defend waterboarding. I, oh, I do. Yes. I do. I, I, I look. It's part of the that history. Does it, yeah. it, it's part of the history of the agency. But the distinction, Michael, is we did it out of regret and sadness and necessity, not out of enthusiasm. No, about but I am interested in, in, <clears throat> in what the thought process is for you. If if somebody says fifty civilian ca casualties, you're going to get a Khalid Sheikh Mohammed type guy. What does that make you? F how do you think about so that when you walk my, out of the office and so go home? In, in, in my book, I, I talk about a drone strike in July of 2008 against Abu Khabab al Masri, who was the WMD expert for Al-Qaeda. Uh, he was being pursued by the U.S. government for a long time. He was a very dangerous man. He was sleeping with some family members, including a grandson. All right? The decision had to be made. The government took the shot. We did everything we, can, we could to minimize collateral damage, but, but his grandson was killed. Okay? That, that's very regrettable. People who make those decisions live with those consequences for the rest of their lives. What, what is it like living with those consequences? When you are outside of the office, When is it something that is you think about periodically? Does it consume you in any way? It's all situation and personality dependent. Look, when the phone would ring at my house when I was director of CIA at 2 a.m., I had a pretty good idea why they were calling me at 2 a.m., and Michael literally Literally, I would say to myself before I picked up the phone, all right, Hayden, be careful. Whatever you decide, you're going to have to live with for the rest of your life. You actually thought that? I actually did. And it wasn't something you got used to? You, you, you thought it every not. time? Of course not. And for clarity here, all right, that wasn't a call for me to be overly cautious. Because you realize if you're overly cautious and something bad happens, you have to live with that for the rest of your life, too. Now we're back to, and we're going to go kill the women and children, too. Yes. All right? To do that intentionally is so unconscionable, I cannot imagine.